Hi, I'm Andrea. And I'm Emily. Welcome to the deck landing page uh, video on our deck page on the website. So this part of the website is organized into four different categories. There's cellular PVC, wood, overhead features and gazebos, and sheds. Now, this video is mainly gonna be focused on the concept of designing a deck and things to consider, and then as well as cellular PVC and wood. The gazebos, um, overhead features, and sheds categories, you can scroll through all those pictures. There's tons of information on there too, um, but that part's mainly focused on like fascia options, pergolas, um, sheds, etc. But this video is mainly gonna be centered on just in general designing a deck and things to consider, as well as more details into cellular PVC and wood. When you have this out for a deck estimate, you're gonna notice that's a little bit different than when you have this out for a fence estimate. Fences are pretty easy to quote out. They measure out where the fence is gonna be going. They go over what type of fence you're thinking, and they can give you a quote. It's relatively easy. Whereas a deck is a lot more designing. So they're gonna sit down with you, go over what you're thinking to use the deck for, if it's gonna be a big barbecuing area, if you're gonna have a lot of flowers, if it's gonna be for lounging, hosting. They'll go over what you're thinking of using the deck for. They'll get you to help them design it. They'll go over your budget. And also budget-wise, it's a little bit more flexible than a fence. They can go over what areas you're willing to take a bit of a hit and not do as fancy and what's really important to you in the deck. So they'll work with you to make the deck the exact vision you're thinking. Yeah. We're, really, we're really trying to, it's not just a here's your quote, that's the price, goodbye. It's much more back and forth of, okay, that feature looks great, but that's a little bit too expensive. Can we maybe take the skirting off? Or can we maybe look for a cheaper fascia? It's much more back and forth because we really are just trying to get you everything you wanted in the design, but also at the price that you can't afford. Yeah, and it's just, it's, every deck is just so different. It's a, it's a unique thing. Every home is different, every backyard is different. It's different than just linear footage of fencing, which is much more straightforward. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing to consider when you're thinking about doing a deck in your backyard is the budget. Now, the reason is because your budget is going to tell you how much you can afford, which influences what type of material you can get. So in general, wood is cheaper than cellular PVC, but don't forget that if you do get a wood deck, there is going to be the cost of staining it, not just once, but staining it every year, as well as your time. Your time is worth something, and the amount of time you're gonna spend every single year cleaning, staining, changing, the, boards. changing boards as the wood deck ages is an additional cost. So while cellular PVC might upfront be a lot more expensive, the fact that it is maintenance free, which we're gonna get into, is it offsets the cost a little bit, or at least makes the cost a little bit more understandable. A pro of a wood deck, though, is that it does, like when you picture a deck, you picture the authentic look of wood. Like it's a classic, authentic look. People really know wood and can really understand a wood deck. A lot of people have built them. People are very comfortable with wood whereas cellular PVC is still a bit newer, so some people are hesitant to get into that. But the downside of wood is that it does require maintenance. It is gonna age. Uh, we install two types of wood decks. So we do pressure treated and we do cedar. Both will last pretty much just as long. C uh, cedar will look better, but pressure treated is more affordable. So when the sales rep comes out, they can break it down both ways for you. Mm -hmm. um, but the downside of wood is that it is going to age and is more maintenance you definitely need to stain a wood deck. So then, for that's why we think cellular PVC is every year becoming more and more and more popular. One of the main reasons why it's so popular is because it is maintenance free. You don't need to stain it, you don't need to change any boards. Once it's installed, you should clean it every year, but that's it. So that's a huge selling feature. Also, it is so great that it offer, it's offered in so many different colors. Um, there's can look through we have all of them listed on the website for the different color options some of the colors are meant to make it look as though it's a wood deck some of them are not some of them are they look cellular it's a different color it's a gray it's it's whatever you're looking for so there's lots more options whereas with wood it's cedar or pt which is only two options um also the thing to consider is that like i said before it's more expensive than wood but keep in mind that you're not going to be paying 
to change boards down the line. You're not going to be paying to stain it and your time to do that every or year. Or replace the deck as soon. Yeah. yeah. And the actual cellular PVC material itself is designed to look like wood in terms of dimensions. So like a one by six wood board is also a one by six cellular board. So it's supposed to look and build like a wood deck, um, but not be and have a ton of advantages. So the second big thing to think about deck wise is the size of your deck. So think about what room you're copying if, uh, uh, in your deck. So probably your living room or your kitchen or your dining room. And then you're gonna want a similar layout. So a lot of people copy their dining room. Uh, and a typical deck is about 12 by 12. Some people might think like, I don't need one that big, but try to keep in mind that in general, your patio furniture is gonna be bigger than say your dining room furniture. Like a, your yeah. dining room chair probably isn't the exact same size as like a patio chair that's more loungy or it's got a cushion on top of it like yeah or an ottoman yeah Yeah. it's just usually like a bigger profile outdoor furniture so keep that in mind so they might you might think like well wow my dining room is 12 by 12 but it's huge I don't need that on the deck yes but the things on your deck might be larger and you probably don't have a barbecue in your dining room like the extra things Mm -hmm. you can do any size we're just recommending start with that it's a good spot a good place to measure so then later on when you're looking at ballpark pricing you know roughly what dimensions to look for okay um so we've gone over all of that the last few things to keep in mind when you're starting to you know visualize designing a deck and what should i think about is intended use so what are you mainly going to be using the deck for is it going to be an outside dining area or is it going to be more of like an outdoor lounge because or a mixture of both because both of those things affect size if it's lounge you might get away with something a bit smaller but if it's dining you need to have enough space to have a, a table out there so keep intended use or if you're doing both if you need the table and the exactly. lounge and even bigger yeah, yeah. The next thing to think about is your actual yard as it is now and what available space you have. So what do you already have in your yard? You have beautiful gardens you can't mess around with or a pool or a play structure and think about how those kind of things will affect, yeah, a garden. will affect the layout of your deck and where your deck can go in relation to what's there right now and that, that can affect the design. Yeah. Next thing is the budget which we've talked a lot about already in this video but the last thing I haven't already said about budget is that like I we are trying to work with you so if you have a design in mind but it's whoa it's way more than I was thinking of spending there are ways that maybe you could still get a larger deck but save money in other areas like let's forget the skirting no skirting let's go with the cheaper fascia option to lower the cost a little bit but still get the same size deck you were hoping for just it's more it's more adjustable The last thing that I really want to talk about is the height of the deck off of the ground. It's a big thing to think about. So a higher deck comes with some additional things, like for example, you're going to need railings. That'll affect the design of the deck, but it'll also affect your cost. It's going to be a lot more expensive. The the railing is a safety measure. Yeah, a safety measure. Because it's higher. Yeah, if your deck is more than 24 inches off the ground, you need to have a railing. Here in Ottawa. It might be different in your area. That's true. But in Ottawa, that's the bylaw. You might want to check with your municipality if you're outside of. Ottawa, but I think that's a pretty common. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and then also think about height as far as accessibility goes. So if it's higher off the ground, you might want decks, not uh, deck steps, not just in one area, but you might want it in multiple spaces so it's easy to get up to the top. Mm-hmm. And also think about do you have anyone with um, needs, like a, do you need a ramp? Is it hard to use the stairs? Mm-hmm. Um, so always think about height and how that affects the design. Mm-hmm. Because a higher deck is not only more expensive to build, but then on top of that, you then need a railing because of the safety measures. Um, and so, you might need a ramp. Yeah, you might need a ramp, so the cost might go up and up and up. So just keep that in mind. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is the deck location. So where is the deck going? Look at your backyard closely. Look for where in your backyard are you getting a ton of sunlight or a ton of shade. And that might affect where you actually want to build the deck. Some people might want it in the shade. Some people might want it in the sun. Might Some might want it in a spot in the middle. Who knows? Look at that. And then also check out the privacy. So think of where you are going to be sitting on your deck. The height really does matter. If you have a super high up deck and you have a neighbor super close by, you might be able to see them really clearly off of your deck. That may or may not be an issue. 
It depends if you have a neighbor, it depends how high up you're designing the stack, but just think about privacy. Um, and then the last thing is the proximity to indoor spaces. Ideally, you want to have a good flow from the house, so usually it's the kitchen, to the deck. Um, so factor that into your design of where you're going to be placing the deck on the back of the house or in the backyard. And then also consider that there are things that you can do to basically change your house. So if you need to maybe cut out a door into a different spot on the back of your house and change the deck location, it's a big project, but it might be worth it if you're going to be spending a lot of time on the deck.